What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great work week so far. Hope you had a good Wednesday. Um, it's time to really start talking about the storm system here in the next couple days. It's going to hit Friday, Friday night into Saturday morning uh, for areas of the Mid South and Western areas, Western areas of the Mid South and the South Central U.S. Um, a slight risk is already up for day three. That might get upgraded to something at day two, but that's pretty significant to already have a slight risk at day two, day three, which is what I'm about to show you guys here in a second. So we're going to talk about that. What's going on is basically a cold front sagging down. It's going to slow down, which is uh, not good news because normally when you have a cold front that sweeps on through, um, basically that prohibits a little bit the severe weather elements here. I'm going to discuss that here in a second. But I want to mention, but really before we start breaking this down, is a lot of the short-range models like the NAM and HRBOR model, they're not really in great range right now, so we can't really break them down as much as I'd like to. But tomorrow, we'll really be able to dive deep into the short-range models. But we're still going to take a look at them and show, you, and show what they do show. We're going to take a look at some soundings for certain areas around Louisiana and Arkansas. And we're going to break down the elements of what's going on, the ingredients in place that's going to promote a severe weather event, uh, likely, and a potentially a small-scale tornado outbreak um, uh, for certain areas. We're going to talk about who could see that. So definitely hit the subscribe button if y'all haven't. Like the video if y'all like it. Um, I'm always growing. Severe weather, I will tell you ahead of time, um, that is something that I'm still in the process of learning a lot on. I know a good bit, but I'm definitely more comfortable talking about winter weather, and I always probably will be. But severe weather is something that I've grown on over the last, uh, definitely the last year. So uh, work with me here as I try to break it down for you guys and discuss what's going on here. But if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, you guys are what promotes me to keep really going with this. So I really appreciate all of you guys. Um, so let's get going. Um, right now, slight risk. That's a level two out of five. That's pretty significant for day three. It really is. Um, that's be just de de definitely just the telling story of what's likely to happen. And that's slight risk. Dave, you know, if you don't know where you are on your map, you know, it goes from northern Louisiana and then as far north is uh, southern and north northeast is southern Indiana and everybody in between Arkansas areas of Mississippi, even a small area of Alabama, uh, Tennessee. So this is a, Kentucky. This is a pretty large area. So this is has room to kind of uh, tweak a little bit, has room to upgrade to a level three out of five, which is enhanced. But, you know, this is covering uh 11 and a half million people so this is this is a big deal we're not close enough to where we start breaking down the probabilities and anything like that but there is a 15 percent chance right now of severe weather occurring in this area of 25 miles in any given location that, that's a pretty big deal at this range it really is and really what's what's going on is you have a cold front that's pretty much going to be moving in slow motion, you're going to have a surface flow that rides the boundary up here, and you're going to have a, sur a surge of big time surface moisture and dew points surging well into the 60s, even some 70s in the southern sections. That is pretty significant for December. That is some humid air. Um, you know, I know a lot of people, when they look at the weather app, they look at the percentage as far as how trying to measure what, you know, how humid it is outside. But really the great thing to look at is dew points. When you have dew points in the 60s and 70s, it's very humid air, even for summertime. When you're seeing that in December, that's outrageously humid air. And that's just one ingredient that you need for severe weather. And it's going to be here. There's going to be a warm sector or a moist sector, same same kind of deal. And uh, the mid-level shear at 500 millibars, which is, you know, in the upper mid-levels of the atmosphere, um, it's going to be coming out in the southwest, which, it, you know, a lot of times it does with a positively tilted trough, which is what this is going to be. Thankfully, this is not going to be negatively tilted, but it could trend to more neutrally, uh, neutrally tilted, which basically goes just a straight dip down. Positively, positively tilted goes like this. When you have a negatively tilted trough, that's when you really have to worry about severe weather. So... Um, a lot of wind energy with this. There's going to be just enough cape to deal with um, that's just going to amplify this severe weather event. So we look at GFS, it really you know, tells a tell what's going on here. This is our system. And you know, this is around the afternoon, evening hours here in the south central U.S., so probably around 5, 6 p.m. Um, 
uh, basically uh, Central Standard Time here, and uh, it shows the moisture building here. You know, this is the GFS. It's not going to show individual cells or thunderstorms. That's not what the GFS does. It just basically shows you where heavy precipitation, heavy rain is, or either heavy winter uh, or wherever winter heavier winter precipitation is. So um, it's not going to break it down like the NAM and HRR model is, but. Here's your 500 uh, millibar wind speeds here, and here it comes. You're getting into Friday, and here's this thing dipping as you're getting into Friday evening, and you know that that's that's some you know 50, 60 knot winds at 500 millibar range, which is pretty high up, but basically the winds are going to be screaming well, well above our heads in these areas right here. So plenty of wind energy um, to deal with. You look at the 850s. Which you know, when you get in the 850s, that's about you know four to six thousand feet up in the air, according to the GFS. You know, which is what you look at when you're trying to look for that low-level jet. And here it is. You got winds. You know, th this is basically what you look at when you you know you look way up in the air and you see clouds moving like a thousand miles per hour. That's a low-level jet, and that's what's going to be happening here, happening here in the uh, basically Friday into Saturday here in the Arkansas. Um, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, areas of Texas, Oklahoma, and up into the areas of the Ohio Valley as we're getting into Friday as uh, there's going to be a lot of wind screaming ahead at 50, 60 knots, which is going to create shear, which is basically going to create a spin in the atmosphere, really at the surface. So it's going to be more of a surface base rotation with some of these storms, which is going to promote um, a tornado threat in this area it really is and e even as far north as the Ohio Valley it really can happen here in fact I wouldn't be surprised that Ohio Valley is actually the area that gets the most severe weather but we'll see you know it's really hard to tell who's going to get the most severe weather here but this is Friday into Saturday a lot of wind energy to look at right here and the crazy thing that's blowing my mind with this is how much low-level moisture we have as we're getting into Friday afternoon these are dew points surging into the 60s and uh, you know dew points getting into the 60s as far north as the Ohio Valley and this is the GFS this is ample amount of low-level moisture this is not even a problem I don't think now I will say when you get your tornado outbreaks a lot of times you get dew points in the 70s but this does a really good job of also showing you how slow this cold front's going. So this isn't a very quickly eroding moist sector. Um, you know, it, it's eroding pretty quickly, but in the grand scheme of things, um, there's a several, several hour period where conditions are certainly favorable for severe weather. I click on the soundings here and, you know, around the Louisiana, Arkansas border here and I click it and, uh, you know, you see the hazard immediately, tornado threat. But you look at the photograph right here, you can tell it's uh, more of a low level spin in the atmosphere, but you see the spin to it. And you see the bowing right here. And, uh, you know, it hooks back in. That tells us that there's a spin in the atmosphere. You look at the surface dew points in this area are pushing 70 degrees. And that's extremely humid for this time of year. Um, as far as the air temperature at the surface, that is definitely pretty warm. I'm almost 80 degrees in December for Friday evening for this area. And you have some areas of some dry air in the, in the, in the basically the low to mid levels. And you know, that to me, that tells me there's probably going to be a little bit of basically some, uh, excuse, excuse me, just some dry air in the atmosphere. So, <clears throat> so that's probably going to hinder maybe the tornado threat somewhat but you also see veering of the winds as you climb in the atmosphere start off out of the basically the southwest and then as you get higher they come more out the west so there's a little bit a little bit of a spin to the atmosphere not much but um so this is a sounding supported supportive of a tornado threat for sure and you know it's something we need to watch out for but you know these dew points are really impressive here um you know, you're looking at surface based cape. There's not a lot, but you don't need a lot. You know, you you don't need, you know, cape from three to four thousand joules per kilogram. You really don't. And a lot of times you don't have it. And this is the NAM. So a lot of times it's uh, it's not very reliable to look at this range. But you see the surge of uh, basically convective energy building all the way into the Ohio Valley 
and you know you got 500 to 1,000 joules per kilogram. This might be a little overdone. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, but you mix that with the surface moisture with the wind energy, and it's just ingredients for severe weather. You look at energy uh, helicity index here, and this really combines basically convective energy mixed with storm helicity. Um, normally, when you get values around the two to three to four range, that is definitely supportive for tornadoes. And of course, it spikes. You get values around one to two to three here in northern Louisiana. You know, I was watching a video from uh, Reed Timmer uh, earlier uh, today, and this is an area he's targeting right here. He's thinking northern, I think northern Louisiana and two southern areas of Arkansas might be a prime area for tornadoes. So trying to figure out where these storms are going to initiate is hard. To, you know, you look at the latest NAM, and you go all the way out to 60 hours out, which, well, you go all the way out about 50 hours out, which takes us into you know, it's a Friday afternoon, evening, and really all you see is showers. You see these individual cells, but nothing looks outrageous at all. It really, really doesn't. Um, in fact, nothing really initial, initiate, initializes until the very end of the run at about 1 a.m. in central Arkansas when you have a little bit of a linear look to it where you get a line of storms starting to pop up. You all the way out to 48 hours out on the HRRR model, the latest long range, which takes us about 1 p.m. Friday, and you have some showers. Some renegade showers starting to pop up, which could easily become super cellular in nature. You got that surface load going here, but it doesn't really get far enough out. You know, watch these cells in Alabama too and, and Mississippi. It doesn't really get far enough out to really get the big picture on what's going on. So, um, I will tell you guys, we will know a lot more on this tomorrow. A lot more. So I'll give you all another update and I'll be a little bit more informative as far as a radar picture prediction on what this is going to look like on radar. Um, but for my folks up in Canada, I'm really impressed with this look of the storm as what's in the northeast will continue to move northeast. Nova Scotia, you are going to get hammered, continue to get hammered overnight into Thursday with um, you know some, certain areas you're going to see you know, one to two feet of snow, but then you get into uh, Newfoundland and certain areas you're going to see two to three foot of snow. Um, I don't know what's the most heavy, heaviest populated of these areas. I imagine the bigger cities, especially Newfoundland around the St. John's area is probably more of the heavier populated area. But, you know, I don't know how much snow they're predicting for your area, but with this low pressure this close and is still deepening um, as it's moving northeast, uh, you're definitely going to get some gusty winds and tropical storm force winds. And then this, the low pressure is going to move, you know, over the most southeastern area in Newfoundland, which is obviously going to turn the rain over to snow as you, um, as these storms bring their own warm air, if you will, when you're right around the low pressure. But um, an insane looking storm. You look at the GFS as far as snowfall totals and, I mean, just crazy looking to me up to three feet in certain areas uh, showing a couple feet and in, in even St. John. So I'm, under, uh, you know, I'm very interested to see what happens with this storm, what, what totals gets reported out of these areas. So keep me updated. I've had a lot of people comment from Canada and uh, I appreciate y'all. Uh, you know, it's really cool interacting with different people from other countries. So keep me updated what y'all see out there. I'm very interested, um, but that's all I got guys. Stay safe out there and God bless.